Mars is the final frontier. The red planet has captured our imaginations for decades, and now we are finally making plans to colonize it. But what will life be like on Mars? What do we need to survive there? In this video, I'll tell you everything you need to know about surviving on Mars. We know that we humans need at least three things to live. Oxygen, food, and water. Can we find these things on Mars? The answer is maybe. The first thing we need to figure out is whether there's enough air for us to breathe. No man has yet set foot on Mars, but thanks to technology, we know quite a lot about the planet. Using data from spacecraft orbiting Mars and robots sent to the red planet, scientists have found little oxygen in the atmosphere. 95% of the air is carbon dioxide. The other 5% mainly consists of nitrogen and argon gas. In other words, Mars's atmosphere is toxic. You better be in a spacesuit when you land there. Do I even have to sleep in my spacesuit? Yes, unless we can transform the planet or parts of it into an Earth-like one. First, we must find a way to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. We need a machine similar to the so-called oxygenator in the sci-fi film The Martian that separates oxygen from carbon CO2. The good news, NASA has already created an oxygenator. It is called MOXIE. MOXIE is a small device inside a six-wheeled rover which NASA sent to Mars last year. In April this year, NASA had better news to share with us. Mars rover extracts first oxygen from Red Planet. In a statement, NASA said that MOXIE could pave the way for science fiction to become science fact, isolating and storing oxygen on Mars to help power rockets that could lift astronauts off the planet's surface. Such devices also might one day provide breathable air for astronauts themselves. NASA official Jim Reuter says the new technology offers more hope that human colonization of Mars is possible. MOXIE has more work to do, but the results from this technology demonstration are full of promise as we move toward our goal of one day seeing humans on Mars. Oxygen isn't just the stuff we breathe. Rocket propellant depends on oxygen and future explorers will depend on producing propellant on Mars to make the trip home. But apart from its toxicity, the Martian atmosphere has a couple of other problems. It's too thin and too cold. The Martian atmosphere is only a hundredth of Earth's. As a result, water boils at around body temperature. That means your blood will literally boil in your veins. That is while your body freezes as the average temperature is about minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 60 degrees Celsius. Can we do anything about this? Is there a way to make the atmosphere thicker, more breathable, and warmer? The answer is yes, at least in theory. It's called terraforming. It is basically the process of changing a planet's climate into an Earth-like environment, with more hospitable conditions. In Mars's case, it's about warming it up and making it less toxic. Scientists and Mars colonization enthusiasts like Elon Musk have talked about three hypothetical solutions for terraforming the planet. The faster and crazier way proposed by Musk and others involves nuking the planet's ice caps to release carbon dioxide, which would then thicken the atmosphere and warm up Mars. The problem with this approach is that it requires quite a lot of nuclear warheads. What we would need to do on Mars is basically what we are desperately trying to avoid here on Earth, global warming. The slower and more sensible way to warm Mars is by releasing a bunch of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and chlorofluorocarbons, which would trap the heat and raise Mars's temperature. But scientists say this could take hundreds if not thousands of years. The final way is to use large mirrors to deflect sunlight to the dark side of Mars, thus warming up its surface. NASA is already working on using mirrors to propel spacecraft through space. Scientists have proposed building 200,000-ton Mylar mirrors with 155-mile-long diameters. While we might be able to send humans to Mars in the next few years, terraforming the Red Planet is unlikely to happen anytime soon with today's technology. But if we can't terraform Mars, can we build a colony there? Yes, there are other ways to try. As soon as we land on Mars in our specially designed spacesuits, we need to start building a fully closed ecosystem that can keep us alive. In 1991, scientists tried this in Arizona when they created Biosphere 2. 
a nearly three-acre glass enclosure that had a rainforest, an ocean with saltwater and coral reef, and 3,800 species of plants and animals inside. It was designed to be a self-sustaining environment, a prototype for a future Mars colony. Eight people were locked inside for two years. The experience did not turn out to be very successful. After a few months, oxygen ran dangerously low, and external oxygen had to be supplied to maintain the experiment. But we have learned quite a lot from the experiment. It showed that humans could remain healthy and productive in a totally enclosed environment with limited food sources. In theory, we could replicate the Biosphere 2 experiment on Mars, recycling water and growing plants. Growing food is a must for any colony to thrive, but there is a problem with that too. Turns out, Mars doesn't have soil. It only has fine, sandy dust. It's called regolith, and it is not easy to break down into nutrients your plants need. But there are ways to grow certain types of food without soil. Here on Earth, we already use hydroponics to grow plants in a water-based solution. What exactly is hydroponics? Hydroponics is a method of gardening that doesn't use soil. Instead, it uses a water-based solution to grow plants. The roots are planted in the nutrient-rich liquid, and an overhead system provides everything they need for life – natural or artificial sunlight, air, and temperature control. It's great for plants such as tomatoes, lettuce, and potatoes. The idea is quite simple, really. There's no dirt needed because all necessary nutrients are added to the water. The roots of the plants are submerged in it, getting all they need for life from this liquid medium. Hydroponics can be further improved by integrating aquatic animals such as tilapia fish into the water-based solution. The fish eat the plant's nutrient-rich water to produce fertilizer which is then absorbed by the roots of the plants. A fish's waste provides a continuous source for feeding plants with essential nutrients and chemical fertilizers without any additional expense or work. After all, it's not bad to add fish to your diet on the red planet. But what about water? Do we have water on Mars? Scientists have found strong evidence of water on Mars, which could provide all the water we need for growing plants and drinking. But the water is mostly believed to be in glaciers in the polar ice caps and below ground. It can be extracted by melting the ice caps. Scientists have also found perchlorate salts, which contain water to be extracted with a process called ion exchange. Do you remember the Dutch company that promised a one-ticket trip to Mars in 2022? That company has now gone bankrupt, but the quest for colonizing Mars continues. Elon Musk remains highly confident that he can send humans to Mars in the next five years. NASA is not as optimistic, but earlier this month it announced that it is recruiting to send humans to Mars by 2037. Do you want to know the application requirements? Applicants must be healthy and non-smoking, aged 30 to 55, speak English for communication between crew and mission control. Do you want to be part of the first Mars settlers? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to watch our next video on Elon Musk. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.